And now it's time for more of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hook up here. We're having a great time this morning. It's just Corey and I. We're having fun. Pete is on assignment heading down to Baja. Get him, you know, make sure everything's good down south. Check on check on some surf. Check on some fish. Make sure everything's good. You know, I don't blame him. As they say, you got to do a little field research. You know, you don't like you don't want to buy a car from a guy that doesn't know how to drive. Right? You certainly don't want to get fishing info from a guy that's not uh, out and about. So, anyways, we're having a great time here this morning. It's just Corey and I on the Freelance Show. We're talking we're talking what you want to talk about. Answering your questions. Taking your texts. It's been a great time this morning lots of fun some really good conversation we got another full hour of it coming your way oh man we certainly do rick and check this out we're giving away a full day trip on the san diego out of c4 sport fishing who by the way starts up next saturday yeah. i know uh, reservations you could already make out of at a seaforthlanding.com, or you can call Marcus on the radio over there at Seaforth <laughs> and get it all done. And we're giving away a full day trip on the San Diego. Give us a shout, 213-432-1090. The phone lines have been lit up the entire show. Or text us via the app. I know we've got a ton of texts. I can't even read them all at this point, Rick, and a lot of good ones for yeah, sure. No, no. But- you do that via the uh, Let's Talk Hookup app. And uh, as Corey always says, too, make sure you include that contact info, just like Tom did from Hesperia. He was had a, a, a quick one. Uh, he just picked up a brand-new Makaira 16 and is wondering what the best rod might be um, for that size reel and fishing fish from 80 to 100 pounds. And I think a 16-sized reel is something you're going to predominantly fish like a, an 80 to 100-pound size top shot on. And for me, I'm a seven to seven and a half foot rail rod guy, assuming you're sport boat fishing and and doing that kind of thing. And uh, there are tons of great options available. You you know, rods are rods are tough. Uh, There's no doubt. I mean, you can see it when you go into every tackle store. Ours is, you know, is not immune to that either. Not necessarily every option is available right now. So picking out a rod for that kind of depends a little bit on you have to play the game of you know, what is the very best rod and what is the very best rod that happens to be available? You know, close my eyes and pick probably my favorite rod for your situation, Tom, that, that Makaira 16 with either an 80 or 100 pound top shot. It would be a Calstar Graphiter um, 770 series. That's the seven foot rail rod and either a 770 heavy if I thought I was going to be more towards the 80 pound um, but still have enough rod to fish 100 or the 770 extra heavy if I was planning on fishing 100 but still, you know, that wasn't too much rod to drop down and fish 80 with that said there are a lot of other great options out there uh united composites maybe that centaur series a um a seeker osp in like a two by three or two by four or a three x you know something in that area there um there are plenty of good big fish rail rod options that exist but if you were asking me for my single favorite um for that size reel it'd probably be a calstar graphiter 770 extra heavy and i'm a i'm a seven to seven and a half of a guy, but I really like seven. You put that rod in my hands on a big fish, it just feels very, very comfortable. Um, anyways, with that great text, let's uh, let's roll into the phones, Corey. Let's do it. How about uh, Don? Don from uh, Woodland Hills. Appreciate you joining us on Let's Talk Cook Up this morning. Hey, Don. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, really good show this morning. It's always fun to, to, to talk about a whole lot of different subjects. Um, I actually have two after listening to a couple of the callers this morning. Number one, um, Spectra. How how often should one consider changing out their Spectra? And I have to say I've got one reel that's got one of my Talicas or um, uh, yeah. My tax have um, Spectra that's 10 years old. And then the other is on the Flatfall knife jigs. What's the heaviest you can find above 300 oh, couple grams? A couple of really good questions. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think uh, the Spectra thing, uh, 10 years is not uh, an extended amount of time, really, for... Uh, I've got Power Pro in that age spectrum where you're going to be just fine. And I would let the uh, Spectra tell you. And and if you see uh, deterioration, change it out. I mean, it's not worth, uh, well, 
number one, look at the price and equate that to 10 years. And you're not paying an entire amount per year based on the 10 years. When I'm calico fishing, I have to change it out quite often. This is where I'm so stoked that you asked this question, Don, because I was very curious on what Corey's answer would be because the answer is going to vary based on how you're, how you're using the Spectra. That's exactly it. And that's, that's what I'm getting at here is calico fishing. I'm sending that Spectra out of the guides and back through the guides a thousand times during the day. Mm -hmm. And there might be a hundred times that it's got pressure on it. Or maybe add another 50 where I'm hung up in the kelp and trying to yank it out or whatever. And so all that pressure equates to friction and use in the Spectra. The longer you use it, the more uh, it breaks down. It gets uh, like hairy. I, mm, I don't know the... Yeah, the, fuzzy. Yeah, know, it gets whatever. fuzzy, hairy. All these little uh, things come off after, a after time. What I do is because... That is at the extent of my cast, right? So after I wear it down, it might take six months. It mm -hmm. might take, uh, if I'm going a lot and catching a lot of fish, it might take a couple months. What it does is it impedes your cast. You go mm -hmm. to make a cast, it grabs itself, it slows you down, and sometimes stops at the worst, right? Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I'll take that reel, and I'll then spool it onto another reel. Mm -hmm. And so think about that. So I now have the worst of my spectra at the bottom yep. and now the cleanest, best at the other end that I can use fresh and clean, maybe get an entire season out of that spectra. Tuna fishing, like you're saying, Don, it might last you longer than 10 years. In the same way that you noticed your casting line bad, it's the same thing with your bait fishing. I, I would say that when we see spectra that's, probably needing to be changed in the shop a, a lot of times it um sometimes it's that furry fuzzy hairy feeling but, but more than anything for me it's like a it gets like gummy or kind of sticky yeah. and and what happens exactly as you said is the line now doesn't want to flow off the reel as clean, easy clean. it's kind of like catches so when your bait is trying to swim line off your reel instead of that spool you know rolling smoothly it's er Er, stop herky jerky the spectra catches itself a little bit um i think Corey said it the very best at the very beginning you, you just need to let the line tell you when it's time to change 10 years is definitely not um too you know too long of time to go by it could be 15 or 20 years if the line's still in good shape it's going to be in great shape with that said it could be line you fish a lot flat falling if the you know, your jig hangs up and it fouls funky and you wind it up hell helicoptered and it's really twisted and rolled around and, and funky, then it might be time to, to swap it. It might be time to reverse it. Like Corey was saying, I mean, you're, you know, we're, we're, I would say that we'll probably see a little bit more frequent line changes based on the way that we've been fishing with a lot of that knife jig, flat fall jig, because just like you were saying, Corey, you're making so many more lifts and drops and pressure line twisted more tangles you know and and uh although it'll probably retain its strength just fine it just doesn't fish as nice as it does when it's clean and straight and not not all messed and, up and honestly don and and rick there's no worse feeling than than seeing where i want to make a cast a calico boiled or something happened and i want to make that cast and that that uh stickiness ends up stopping my cast at halfway out mm -hmm. and is it worth $20 to me? Hell no. I'm going to tell you that right now. I, I'm, I'm going to spend the extra 20, 25 bucks on a, on a new spool of power pro and, and come out clean, yeah. you know, and is that worth it on your, on your tuna trip? Uh, uh, it might be $80 worth of spectra, right? On your, on your bigger reel, but you're watching a foamer of a hundred pounders, right? <laughs> and your cast gets, uh, you know, stuck halfway out there. Sure. Well, it should have been fixed from the beginning. Or sitting at the loop and, oh. you know, the bait's on the small side. And you're trying to get yeah. a bait, you know, you're, you're doing your very best to get your bait looking better than the 25 guys that are standing next to you. And if while he's trying to swim line off that yeah. reel, that Spectre's grabbing and catching, like, you know, you, you just want to be doing everything you can to make your bait better looking than the guy next to you. And so if that, if that's what it takes, if the Spectre's really twisted up, then maybe it's time to change it out. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm, but with all that said, I'm a big fan I'm you know, not broke don't fix it like don't change it for no reason but if it's if it's time yeah it's it's time and let the specter tell you yeah in regards to the big knife jigs i would say the most 
the most common size that we see being used on the knife jigs is in the vicinity of 300 grams, 300, 320. That seems to be about the most popular. When there's a lot of wind and current and boats are drifting fast, those even heavier sizes, you know, 400 gram is not uncommon. I would say the the largest of the popular size jigs tends to be about 500 grams, but I, I have seen them and they are available all the way up to a thousand. But that's do you, do you carry those in the shop? We, do, we don't. We've special ordered some for some guys before. Yeah. It, it's a thousand grams. It's like a paper towel tube. You know what I mean? Like, Dude, I mean, <laughs> no. How heavy is that in ounces? I couldn't tell. Or I'll, pounds. You know, Siri pounds. will be able to tell us during the break for sure. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, but uh, I would say so. Yeah, I've seen them, and we've special ordered them all the way up to that. But um, five hundred tends to be the heaviest size that gets fished with regularity. Most common. Overwhelmingly, yeah. three hundred seems to be the right size for most of the scenarios that we're catching that we're catching our fish in that's crazy one, one thing that i have heard from some of our our boats talk about in in terms of that knife jig fishing is those when you start to get really scoped out that jig does not get bit nearly as well as when it's pretty Straight vertical up and down that shouldn't be a thing i mean if the lure is is working while it's falling i mean falling is falling and it shouldn't be but you know just talking to our sport boat guys and th- that's the you know the one advantage that we get to have at, at fisherman's landing is we you know we talk to the guys every night you know what what's what and and there's been a, a lot of people talking about that that those jigs get bit so much more frequently when a guy is straight up and down on his first drop or his second drop rather than a guy trying to you know get half a dozen lifts and drops out of it in his line is way scoped out and there is one thing about a heavier jig is it is a little bit lesser affected by the wind and current so you do stay straighter for maybe a couple of extra drops more work on the angler but you know there's something to be said about that too crazy yeah Yeah. and it makes sense right because that angle of the line rick as you're trying to lift and pump it is not the same yeah i mean it's different no number one you've got that the reason your line is scoped out is you've got the 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 angle and the pressure and that pressure is not allowing you to lift and let it fall as it normally would. Totally. I like it. And you just, when you start to get scoped, we, we talked about like the, the, the most important part is having your, you know, is having your offering in front of a hungry one. When you're scoped way out like that, it, it just takes it. You, you just, you have no idea. Here's, you know, here's you have fu- no idea where that's at. Here's the funny thing, Rick. You're talking about 100 to 200, 200 pound tuna, right? Sure. It's the same darn thing for one to two pound reds. <laughs> it is. It's the yeah. same. The more that gets scoped out, the less likely you are going to get bit. The same exact gotta scenario. Be, yeah, you got You just got to be on them. But a, a great question, Don, and appreciate the phone call. Corey, let's grab another. Let's do it. How about cheer? Cheer calling from Cardiff. Appreciate you joining uh, us this morning. I, let's talk quick. Hey, cheer. Hey, hi, Rick. Hi, Corey. Uh, I just got to say thanks, guys, for <clears throat> taking the time to sit around the table with all of us anglers and just share your knowledge. I love this show. I love this format. So thank you guys. Yeah, buddy. That's so, fun. hey, thank I got you. a question, Corey. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, I got a question, Corey. I, I love going down to Cedros. I love fishing for the yellowtail, and I feel pretty good about my skills for surface iron casting for yellows. But where I could use some instruction from you is on your – uh, your your soft baits, these like the slug or the viejos, especially the slug, perhaps for halibut, because we had a lot of fun last year um, fishing for halibut, but we used stick baits and threw them up on the beach and kind of pulled them back. But the whole time I was thinking, I wonder what would happen if I was using a slug. So chat yeah. about that a little bit and about the viejos and the the weedless great questions yeah, yeah. Really, really good questions yeah the the we've talked about it on the show quite often and uh the whole slug lead head lead headed slug technique is it's lethal i mean if you're using a little four inch slug in the in the bay with a with a quarter ounce lead head for spotted bay bass or small halibut it's it's as lethal as an eight inch slug with a three ounce lead head for halibut and or rockfish in 150 feet of water. It's the same technique. It's the same. It's so dumb that the way I'm going to explain it to you doesn't even make sense. It's just send it down and, and pump the rod a couple times. Usually you're already bit. 
before you can even pump the rod, you know? It's the fall? It's it's the way that it falls erratically after the pump of the rod. Okay. Lift the rod, let it fall, lift the rod, let it fall, and usually on the 99 out of 100 bites are going to be on the sink. And the number one thing I can tell you, a short shank lead head is mm -hmm. key, and to glue the slug to the lead head, whether it's a 4-inch or an 8-inch slug. And... It's a fun technique. The cleaner the water, the better you're going to get bit. And that, the clean water allows for the visibility. Okay. You need visibility and, and some type of uh, sunlight or daylight. Okay. And when you let it fall, are you, are you letting it fall where you can really feel it with the rod tip and you're like letting it back down with the rod? Or are you, you pumping it up and then dropping the rod and letting the line fall, like letting the slack fall unabated? The latter one. So... To, to, to lift the rod four or five feet and mm -hmm. let it fall, lift the rod, let it fall, it is, it's all over the place. If you put it over the side, do it at the dock. Mm -hmm. Check it out. See what it looks like. You'll, you'll be amazed. That thing is like an ice jig going in circles, just so erratic. It looks like you just put on a sardine and it's all over the place, not knowing what the heck. It's like in the worst neighborhood it could ever be. <laughs> and that's always the one that gets pounded. That's the bait that absolutely the halibut inhales, the rockfish inhales. That's the one that gets bit. Yeah. And it's not too difficult to imitate. It, it's literally, it, it's so easy. It's dumb. So you're putting yourself in a cheer shoes. He's down at Cedros. They're spending their afternoon doing some halibut drifts. What what is the what's the lead head slug combo so, that you like? I'm fired up talking about <laughs> this because it's right up my alley. So if if I'm the shallower the water I'm fishing, uh, the more of a cast I'll make. Okay. So if I'm fishing 30 feet or less, I'll make a long cast, let it sink to the bottom. In shallow, you're in 30 but, feet casting casting to shallower this, water. Yes. Okay. Well, it, whatever it is, you know, it it could be parallel to the coastline, but. Here's how easy. Wind it in four or five feet, let it sink again. Four or five feet, let it sink. The reason you don't want to wind it in 12 feet is because most of the predatory fish won't react to it as well as you only wind it in five feet. If you pull it from the fish five feet, they're going to give a burst of action of five feet to run that thing down, whether mm. it's a bass, a halibut, a rockfish. If you wind it in 12 to 15 feet, they're going to watch it go by and and probably not run it down mm -hmm. at 15 feet They're, but they'll you watch want, it you want to keep it in their wheelhouse you want to draw that reaction bite that's what you're doing okay you're drawing a reaction bite. they eat it from the head so the i mentioned a short shank yeah. lead head that's the reason why and don't be afraid of that because a a a, a one ounce lead head in in a big slug you just look at it and you think to yourself, oh, there's, I mean, it's all bait. There's like, no hook here. Like You're thinking, like, I'm going to get short bit. Totally. Like, I need to put a trailer hook and do all this this fancy stuff. Don't. Forget about that. <laughs> Trust me. The short shank lead head. Like a with, boxer? With a hook. A boxer, just a regular tri head, whatever you wrap your mind around, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you can use up to a three-ounce lead head, you know, if you're fishing 100 feet of water or whatever. Uh, what else was I going to say? There was something else. A heavier floral you want to use. Uh, I would, if I'm using an anus slug, I'm using 50 to 60 pound floral liter. Okay. Uh, How long of a piece? Uh, at least three feet. Okay. You know, yeah, just like I would on the surface for calicos. Uh, glue the bait to lead, as I've already mentioned. Uh, man, there's, there's so much to it. It's a fun bite. That's it cool. really is. It's a lot of fun. The bite on the sink too is pretty like, it, it just, that's a no doubt. Yeah. And you can't help but have it like catch you. Oh, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're, it's just, Oh, what happened? You know? And then, and, and I think what a lot of people lose sight of is halibut are very predatory. They will run things down as equal as a calico will. Mm -hmm. And so you want to draw that bite. you want to dictate that bite. You want to, and here's the thing, too. A lot of guys, you'll see the bite marks down the back end of the slug. Let me explain to you what just happened there. Is that fish, maybe a, it could, it, two things. It could be a smaller bass that has uh, grabbed it from the middle of the bait and the teeth marks get rubbed down the back, mm -hmm. so you think it's in the back end. You want that one pounder to miss it. You, right. that's, yeah. that's like part the best of, case. Listen to me. That's part of the dictation of the predatory eight pound bass that's going to come take it from the one pounder mm -hmm. and so that wounded what that eight pounder now sees as a wounded bait is now inhaled 
gone. You're in the back of the throat of an eight pounder. Yeah. yeah. I, I always thought that like a trap rig for halibut, like all that does is hook the fish that you weren't really fishing for in the first place. The right one, yes. the right one eats it the right way. 99% of the time. Rick, open the mouth of a 22 inch halibut. That thing is inhaling an eight inch mackerel. Yeah, no problem. Like no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I love it, man. I get fired up. I as you know. Can tell. <laughs> great, great uh, questions here for sure. With that said, we're going to find out what's going on on the water. We've got our fish dope.com reporter standing by Corey. I know it, man. I bet he's a little lathered up too, as lathered <laughs> as I am. And the catch report is sponsored by the fish pros at fisherman's processing in San Diego. Not only do they offer the best processing for your fish when your trip returns to the San Diego landings, as well as your private boat catch. Now, with Fish Pros and Marquee, you can purchase fresh fish, smoked, jerkied fish, uh, spices, rubs, smoked cheese, their famous tuna burgers, and their amazing poke kit, along with their ceviche spice kit, too. Stop by their location at Old Town on Taylor Street. Or call for details or order online at fishmansprocessing.com. Let's find out what's happening. We got your saltwater guide standing by. Good morning, Dave Hansen. Well, hey, Corey and Rick. Yeah, just like Corey just said, <laughs> this is my this is my wheelhouse, baby. Yeah. This is it. I'd rather be calico bass fishing. Same with my wife, Kelly. We'd rather calico bass fish and fish for anything on the planet. And we can both fish for whatever we want, whenever we want, wherever we want. But calico bass is our thing. But listen, everyone knows what's going on right now. All you got to do is stick your head outside. So we don't need to talk about that today. But what I wanted to say was this is super important, gang. If you guys are listening to this show, Rick is a phenomenal fisherman. We can't take anything away from Rick. He is a phenomenal fisherman, and he knows exactly what's going on on the water. He works with the long-range guy. He knows every part. But the guy you really should be listening to very closely is the guy that pours his own bait, the guy that worked on the bait boat, right. the guy that knows exactly what the bait looks like. Because I'm a fly fisherman, and it's about match the hatch. There is no one in this industry that knows more about matching the hatch than the guy sitting next to Rick right now. If I, no <laughs> I'm doubt, just trying man. to tell you, no doubt. you need to listen. You need to listen to what Corey's saying, you guys. There is nothing like his handmade bait. He knows what those fish are eating. He knows what time of year they're eating it because he wouldn't. He got a lesson that none of us got to do. He got to work on the bait boat. He got to see the food. He got to touch the food. He was with the food. He saw the fish that were swimming with the food. That's why it's so important. And I love it when it's you and Corey talking. I like all the other guests, but man, when it's you and Corey talking, Rick. I go to school. I listen to Corey because he knows. I'm and the same, then, man. A, a trap hook for halibut, I've always thought that was the silliest thing I've ever seen in my life. Because, man, like Corey said, they can whoop a mackerel, no problem. The thing I learned the most about halibut was when I went bounce balling with my buddy Matt and Dana Point. He wanted to learn some spots, but he was keyed on that bounce ball. All this let him run, let him run, let him eat it. <laughs> bounce balling, dude. We're drooling a knot and a half, and they're inhaling the bait down to their <laughs> butt. There's no letting them run. Corey, I love listening to you. Kelly and I love your bait. We're going to jump back off the phone because we all know it's, it's kind of a crappy weekend, so we don't need to talk about that. Everything's positive. It's going to go back to full-speed fishing here starting next week. Everything's going to be bitching. Sea bass are biting. Halibut are biting. Calicos are biting. <laughs> <laughs> they are, though. My deckhand went over to Catalina the other day and had full speed, wide open halibut fishing in five feet of water. Just oh, insane. How cool. Man. How cool. Now, he now, said, now you're talking. He said it was so insane. It was just insane. Middle of the backside of Catalina. He had to call me. He was just so excited. He'd never seen nothing like it. He goes, dude, it's just like you said. I said, thank you. <laughs> yep. So. Well, that's awesome, Dave. Well, certainly uh, uh, some great, I, and I couldn't agree with you more. I agree with every every word you said. We're so lucky to have Corey in here sharing this info with us. And, um, you know, again, what that's that's what this is about. Info is what we talk about, that fishdope.com report as things happen. And it's more than just fishing reports. Obviously, the second that the weather window uh, opens up and all the reports come flooding back in, uh, Danny does such a great job compiling all the great information, putting it together for us. But fishdope is also weather. It's 
it's happening. It's bait reports. You know, it's it's what bait is available at the different receivers. It's just a it's an all around killer information site. You say it all the time. You're crazy to not just add that tool to your arsenal. Having fish dope doesn't mean you're relying on that to, you know, to plan your day or not. But what it does do is it just adds another, you know, it just adds another arrow in your quiver. I mean, it's the the more information, the better. And it's some of the best around. And you can save 20 bucks off of a new membership to fishdope.com by using the code hook up now. Hook up now, all lowercase, no space, saves you 20 bucks. And if somebody wants to get some how to info from you, how do we find you at your saltwater guide? Guide, check out my website, YourSaltWaterGuide.com, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I'm all across all those social media platforms. It's all Your Saltwater Guide. I will be here with you guys next week. We'll be talking to you from, uh, I think, next week we're going to be in Cancun. Kelly and I are leaving today, right now, on a eight-day cruise down to the Mexican Riviera. So all right. We'll, we'll enjoy be. you two. Have fun. Watch us live. We'll be live every day showing you how bitching it is to be on a cruise ship again. (laughs) All right, Dave. Have a great trip and a great report. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot for the call. Oh, that was a good one. It's sponsored by Anza Knives, uh, handcrafting knives in the USA for over three decades. Check out the Fish Pro Series and the other custom fillet knives from Anza Knives uh, made from a high-carbon steel, which holds a great edge and is easy to sharpen. Anza Knives are the finest fillet knives ever produced. Produced. Anza also offers knives for military and law enforcement hunting. And check AnzaKnives.com for more uh, info and get the Fish Pro Series at Fishman's Processing. Step in and see Sean and Raymond. Yeah, no doubt. Maybe pick up that uh, ceviche kit for I your next. Uh, I'm on, after this break, I want the Traeger report because I, I know I know you've been know. busy at it, so I want to get that. Yeah, hey, l- let's sneak another good text in. This one um, says for Corey says uh, how um, he wants to know about which baits you're using and how you rig them when you're doing your local rock fishing. That's from Duffy in Long Beach. Oh, it's a good one, Duffy. Uh, I go, you know, because I'm using lighter power pro 20 pound, 30 pound, and it sounds light. It sounds almost too light, but there's really nothing between you and Mm -hmm. the fish straight up and down. You know, generally, uh, the reds and the stuff you want are going to be elevated slightly off the bottom, you know, like at least five to 10 feet, generally speaking. And so when you hook one, you're able to get them off the bottom pretty darn easy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not... That straight uh, pulling with a with twenty pound braid is is all you need, really. I use a very light, uh, I, a, a smaller flat fall style mm-hmm. and a Colt sniper style. Mm-hmm. Two different types, and sometimes they're on one over the other. I would say for the more finessey, like uh, more more you know a little bit tougher of a bite. The flat fall style by far gets bit way better than a cold sniper. Really? Okay. Yeah. And it's just you're teasing them. You're tantalizing yeah. them. And so uh, just to give you like a slight uh, edge and in, in technique, I, I hit the bottom. Mm-hmm. I wind it up 10 feet, work it a little bit. I drop it back down. Generally, because they are a reactionary type fish as a bass or a halibut, everything we've been talking about this morning, rockfish are just equally as predatory and reactionary so by pulling it away from them generally what happens they want it. sure okay you get your strike so i i if they don't need it then I, I give it a few works i let it sink back down a lot of times that fish will come from 20 feet away will come underneath it to check it out and what happens when you drop it back to them right you get two or three fish and you add a competition level one of them is going to eat it That's i promise cool. you and from there i i lift it up five feet i slowly work it up and then again drop it back to them and that doing that style you if you've got any type of competition it only takes two there might be 20 given the fact there's 20 of them is even that much greater of a of a, of a reaction yeah. rate. but you just have to put your mind set like you're fishing bay bass or you're fishing calicos you are know? you trying to get away with the lightest lure that you can get away with to get you to the depth that you're trying to fish is it heavier do you just tie one on and that you're going to fish you know i'm going to fish 100 gram all day because that's good enough like what a, how do you decide what's the right size colt sniper flat well, fall style of lure in the uh like 200 uh, to 300 foot if i can get the 60 gram down uh-huh. that's that's what i'm using okay because 
the flat fall style is made to uh, fall flat. Yeah. It shimmies and works its way down. It doesn't fall more than eight inches without it without it getting on a on a lateral fall, uh-huh. horizontal. And uh, the lighter the lighter the jig you go, just the more finessey it is. Yeah, sure. So that's just keep that in mind. Okay. You know, and there's times where it doesn't matter, right? Sure. Like you can sink out and and you're bit twenty feet before you're at the bottom. It, at that point, it doesn't matter, right? That's cool. But it's when it becomes finessey. I love it, Duffy. I hope that answers your question for you. Great yeah. text. Appreciate the participation. Yeah, appreciate it. And you're in your chance for winning the full day trip on the San Diego. And when we come back, we're going to be taking more of your texts and calls. When we return on the Let's Talk Hookup, Let's Talk Hookup app, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hey, everybody. This is Captain Dwayne Diego, four-pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker. Then there's a real good reason for it, the fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. From the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system, my Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing ground reliably and safe. Take it from me, if you're ready for a new Parker at a fair up front honest deal, you need to see West Coast Marine located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. Season long range fishermen know that the Red Rooster 3 is the finest fishing vessels in terms of technology, design, speed, comfort, and safety. This 105 foot sport fishing yacht meets every demand for comfort while delivering an unforgettable fishing vacation. Captain Andy Cates and crew are experienced, friendly, and sincere in their desire to help you have the trip of a lifetime. Book a trip on the Red Rooster 3 and you'll be back. Trips go fast. So check redrooster3.com or call Lee Palm Sport Fisheries at 619 224 3857. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips for decades. Whether it's a fishing trip or a family vacation, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And Rick, having so much fun on the show and just uh, just great having the participation. And you want to text us via the app, uh, you could do so. I know we, I, I think there's well over 100 of them at this point. <laughs> uh, can't get through them all. But Or if you want to call us, uh, they are full at this point, like they have been the entire show. We, we do appreciate you. And if you want to give us a shout, 213 213- Four three two ten ninety. We're giving away a full day trip on the San Diego to Seaforth, and we mentioned earlier in the show that uh, uh, Boog uh, Ryan there is is starting his run next Saturday. Yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to be nice having the San Diego back running full speed down to the Coronado Islands and just getting a good lay at the land. And obviously, we all get excited and about uh, you know Yellowtail and Yo-Yo Jigging, and those guys are just so good at doing that. But also. I mean, just you want to talk about going down there and, you know, having some really good rock cod fishing, the you know reds and lings that those guys get are just uh, it's fun. You know, it's going to be really good. And we're really excited to have the San Diego up and running I know, back again. I know one thing, Rick, and I know that if uh, Ryan has chosen next Saturday to start his run, it's for a reason. Yeah, no doubt about whether it. it's the conditions are, are getting right or whether he's heard a little something, something about something. Whatever it is, there's a reason. Yeah, no doubt. That's well, yeah, going to be yeah, exciting. Yeah. We'll be waiting to hear how the boys do. Well, with that, the phones are packed up solid. Let's jump back into them, Corey. How about Gus? Gus and Burbank. Appreciate you joining us on Let's Talk Cook Up this morning. Morning, Gus. Morning, Gus. Yo, you guys. Yo, everybody. Yo. <laughs> Hi, Gus. And 
yo, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> the new Papa. Yeah, buddy. Well, uh, yeah. um, it's great to it's great to hear your voices every every weekend, and I uh, uh, this is kind of awkward for me because usually uh, I'm serving up salmon over at uh, the Hyatt in Long Beach. And, yeah, today's uh, the day for the Gus thing- to smoke salmon. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one of the things I like to do when I when I uh, go to the Fred Hall show is I can talk to the to the concessionaires, and uh, you know Kingfisher Charters is a great great place to fish, and I always enjoy talking uh, talking to uh, oh his name escapes me. Uh, Seth? Seth, Seth Bone, mm-hmm. Seth Bone, yes. Uh, um, and I, they, they kind of have a feeling as to what the season uh, holds for us. Uh, you know, some sometimes I'll ask them, you know, uh, that about the halibut uh, limits, and sometimes I'll sure. ask them about salmon if it's if they predict a good salmon run. You know, they can do that. And uh, I was wondering, has anybody heard anything about the salmon run in uh, Central California? Uh, it's supposed to happen pretty soon, I think. And what are they, are they pretty predicting anything or what? Yeah, you know, in terms of abundance level, that that's just not my wheelhouse, Gus. I, I just don't have a good answer for you. I, I'll always... I'll always let you know when I know something and, and I'll never profess to claim to know something that I don't. I just I just don't. I don't have a I don't have a good handle on abundance levels. I think that there are, you know, I, I think that some quick research uh in that Harold Davis world would be a good call. You know, maybe talk to some of the local shops up there if you're trying to plan a trip up that direction. But in terms of, you know, Alaska does has such a good handle on what abundance levels will be based on, you know, what they see returns, you know they have a pretty good idea you know that fish leaves the river and comes back you know at a at a predicted time of year so if they had a you know they had good rainfall and good abundance levels when that fish was spawned they'll usually have at least a a rough idea you know pre-season starts and then once they start to get to do some abundance counts they they have a pretty good idea of what they have going forward as far as is central california that same way man i just don't know that's just not not my world I, i wish i had a better answer for you Nothing better eating, though. I know yeah. that, Rick, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But Gus, I mean, certainly a certainly a fun one. And like you say, that is that that's such a bummer. That was the bummer part about the show's not happening. As I feel the same way. It's like I, that's when you get to go hang out and see Seth and the boys, and you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, hopefully, the shows will come back and uh, next year, and we'll uh, we'll look forward to it when they do. But appreciate the phone call, and just like you said, it's always great to hear your voice. Uh, why don't we jump back to the phone? Let's Corey? do it, Rick. How about Bruce? Bruce calling uh, from Lemon Grove this morning. Appreciate you joining us on. Let's talk hook up, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Hey, guys. Hey, thanks a lot for taking my calls again. Great show. Um, my question is, I want to go fish the flats. I want to fish Punta Banda, Descanso. What are the regulations like? What do we need to have? Rick probably knows that better than anybody working in the shop there. In terms of just getting yourself down there on a private boat, uh, Bruce? Yes. Yeah, so... So as a um, private so boater, what do to, we need to have? Yeah, um, it, it's not tough. There are some steps. It's certainly not as easy as it used to be, but with that said, it's not too bad either. So fishing the Baja Coast, which you're talking about, less than 12 miles, you know, if you're within 12 miles of inhabited coastline, um, you need to first have a Mexican fishing license. That is available online. It's not the same as it used to be where every shop could just go purchase them from Kona Pesca and then you would fill out a paper license. There are some shops that will do the leg work for you and just charge you a surcharge for doing it. But now basically every person has access to get the permits um, online. Um, you can link over to it from the Sport Fishing Association of California website, um, or you can just do a quick Google search for Mexican fishing licenses um, and purchase your license that way. Uh, so first thing you need is their Mexican fishing license. Since you are going to be within 12 miles of that coastline, you also need to have a FMM, which is the tourist visa. Again, that is a purchase online um, thing, and you uh, you basically go online. I, again, I I linked that from the Sport Fishing Association of California website, which is California Sport Fishing. 
dot org. Um, fill out the FMM paperwork. It's pretty darn easy as well. Um, one FMM will cover the boat and all of the people on it. You punch in pretty basic information, the boat owner's name, the CF numbers, the number of people going, um, and uh, you know, you're leaving from San Diego, you're going to be returning to San Diego, um, and you, you know, one FMM will cover all three people that are on the boat or four people, however it's done. Pay for that, print that out. Um, as far as private boat down to, you know, Descanso, where you're talking about, that's all I take with us on our boat. Our Mexican fishing licenses, our passports. Um, you need to have your passport to get that FMM. Or ID card. Uh, or, or, yeah, our yeah, passport our card. Passport ID yeah. card. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that FMM. That is what I take with me to Mexico. The other piece of equipment that is that is required if you're following to the letter of the law. And I will just be honest with you. I don't have one for my boat. I think you should have one. And I think that I will get one, but haven't got it yet is the, um, is the temporary importation permit, uh, the tip. And, uh, that was always created not for you and your skiff to go down there. That was for a boat that was importing their boat into Mexico. Like that was always the idea of it. If you're going to take your, you know, you're going to take your Pacifica down to Cabo for the season, you got a temporary importation permit. It, it was never originally a piece of paperwork needed for a skiff. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad thing to get. I, I've you know, frankly just been lazy having not got it for my small boat, but I, I will just be totally honest with you. I don't have one for my boat. I have been checked um, in Mexico with just having my FMM and my fishing license. Check was smooth and professional, was never asked for it, never an issue, but it's not an expensive thing. It's just a little more time consuming, um, and it lasts for a long time. You know, It's inexpensive, and I believe it lasts for five years, maybe even 10 years. Um, so that wouldn't be a bad thing to get for the for the whole CYA, you know, just cover yourself. But um, Mexican fishing license, the FMM, your passport, you're good to go. And something uh, that I want to ask you about too, Rick, in this whole thing is uh, if you're fishing the islands, you have to add another level of, of uh, uh, something you One need more. to take. Yep. So... All of the Pacific, all of the islands on the Pacific coast of Baja, a couple years ago, were listed as biospheres, and that was just a. It's a. It gave them a classification to have different regulatory needs for all of the Pacific islands. So every island is a biosphere, whether it be Cedros, San Martin, the Guadalupe. Coronados, Guadalupe, and they all have different regulations there within. Um, and to access the Coronado Islands biosphere. It is just exactly, it's one more permit to get. And you can do one of two things. You can stop at a tackle store like Fisherman's Landing, like Dana Landing, like Seaforth, like Point Loma. Um, and you can buy a bracelet, which is a one day access to it. And they're eight bucks. Very easy to get. You can send one person in from your party. Um, you know, if you know you're going next Saturday, you could come in today, get your permit for next Saturday and get, so, get them in advance. So let me ask you this, Rick, when you purchase those, if I go in and buy one, does it have a date on it? It does. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah, so, it, so they're only good for that day you purchase a four. It, it, exactly. Oh, you you okay. can purchase it in advance, but it has to. It for can't, that date. It can't leave the store without the date written oh, okay. on it. So, okay. I mean, obviously, it would be it would be nice as the fisherman, but they they are hip to that too. You know, okay. they you you can't. Um, they're very specific in how it's sold. You know, it can't leave the store blank. Because honestly, we would all yeah. do the same thing. We would just have one, and then when you need it, oh, here, here it is. But uh, so yeah, it has to be done now. If you're going to go a lot, you can buy an annual passport, and I believe it's now up around forty or fifty bucks that will cover you for the year. But again, it is more involved than just coming in, picking up the bracelet. That's it, that's not bad though, forty or fifty bucks for the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, if you if fish you're a private boater and go down uh, ten times, I mean, you hate to say it, but with fuel at five bucks a gallon, like it's it's way lesser of an expense than a lot of other things is to cover you for the year. Five dollars so. a gallon? I, yeah, hey, if you're lucky. I, yeah. I, no, I think you're shopping a sum of gasoline. <laughs> That's what it's right now. Yeah, exactly. Because they definitely have the best so, price. I hope that helps. I know it was long-winded, Bruce, but the reality is all you need is your Mexican fishing license, your passport, and your FMM. You're good to go. And uh, I hope you have a great trip. Hey, with that, we're going to jump in. got another great text to read for us. I can fire my phone up here. Um, this was another one for Corey. Great information on Mexican bass fishing. I don't hear much about Lake Bacharach. It used to be such a gem. Corey, do you have any information on that one? That was from uh, Tom and Palmdale. Right. I've, I've heard some phenomenal stories about that. Uh, I think really at this point, like uh, the major lodges, like, uh, like seniors, uh, anglers in, you know, Billy Chapman Jr. and Billy mm -hmm. Chapman Sr., 
And the outfits that have lodges that are operating are on Lake El Salto and Lake Picachos. Picachos is about a 50-minute, 5-0, 50-minute drive from the Mazalon Airport away from the coast. It's so close. It's, it's an awesome destination. And uh, those are really the only two lakes. I think there's some other operations that are maybe at Backrack or, or a couple of the other ones I've heard about. Mm -hmm. But, hey, you don't hear of any issues at all. If you're one of those guys that's afraid, that has a wife even, that, sure. or a spouse or a loved one that doesn't want you to, to travel, they hear these things. You heard John Ireland yesterday. He's at a very safe location. Mm -hmm. He operates with minimal security. He's got the security for you, but it's for your level of appreciation right. and comfort. Well, it's the same thing at Lake El Salto and it's the same thing at Lake Picachos. Okay. Those people love having you. They love you being there. They take care of you. It's done on a level, uh, minimal level of security. Your door's left unlocked. I leave my passport on the darn counter the sure. entire time. Nothing's touched. It's, it's, just go and have a good time. That's rad. Yeah. Cool. We hey. go We go for a reason. Yep, no doubt. Great uh, text, Tom. Appreciate that very much. Corey, why don't we jump back into the phones? How about Sam? Sam, call him from Irvine. Good morning. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup, Sam. What's up, Sam? Good morning, guys. Great show. Hey, you know, talking about this 20-pound uh, Spectra Stealth outfit, I, last year, and I've been looking around, and I don't know exactly what to go with, uh, for one of your guests last year talked about 20-pound Spectra and a super light leader for finicky bluefin early in the season and i was wondering if a you know a level wine like maybe the 200 would be something like that or maybe a like a 10 x n type reel but i heard that it's it's hard to wind in uh, that light line on a, a conventional reel without leveling what's your thoughts on that uh, you mean um thoughts on using spectra that's that light without using a, a level one so just a standard conventional open reel and uh, and the use of spectra that's that light human hair that, that was yeah, your question. Yeah, that's correct. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Um, there, there is no doubt that Spectra is more affected by how level it is placed back onto the reel in terms of when it comes back off for a cast. So if you're using a non-level wind reel, it, it is more intention. It is more important that you are on top of your game in leveling your, your line on your reel, both uh, straight, but also with some pressure. So it, it uh, Yes, I mean, I, I think the answer would be correct. That you are right. It is tougher. Um, it just takes a little more um, awareness of you as the fisherman. You want to pinch your fingers together a little tighter so that you're putting it on the reel with a little bit more tension. It's not like when it's wound on the first time. You don't need a rag. It doesn't need to be super tight. But you just need to be aware that you're using that real light line to give you some advantage. And with that comes a little bit of extra work on, on your part. So pinch your fingers a little tighter. Pay a little more attention to how you're winding that line on nice and straight. And then when you go to make your next cast, it's going to come off just as tight and just as right. Um, and it, it, if you are not paying attention to how your Spectra gets loaded back on the reel, it's kind of piled up, it's kind of clumped up on one side, and you really reach back to fire one, it is less forgiving when you're trying to make that, uh, when you're trying to make that next cast. Mono cast easier than Spectra, there's no doubt. Spectra will cast just fine, but it needs to be nice and level and tight. And Spectra... Spectra has some opposites of mono in that the larger the diameter of Spectra, the easier it's going to come off of the reel. But, you know, you're also not going to get that advantage, Sam, that you're talking about of that super light line, very little resistance. Your bait's able to swim better. You're able to get down to depth easier because you got less drag in the water. So there are always going to be pros and cons to it. Um, you know, the pros are many. One of the cons is you just got to be more heads up when you're stacking your line back on the reel. Great question, though, Sam. Pre appreciate it very much. Um, how about uh, a another text? Uh, you know what? Corey, I, I think he got one going there. I do, and it's kind of cool. Uh, Bart, our good friend Bart, right? Bart Hall uh, sent one in, and it's uh, giving information. We had a, a caller asking about salmon in, in, in northern central yeah, California. Yeah. He said, check uh, Ken's Outdoor Pro Shop in Sonoma, and they'll give you the accurate information. He didn't leave a number, but check Ken's. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, Ken's Outdoor Pro Shop. 
Yep. Right on, Bart. Yeah, thanks Perfect. for thanks Thank you, Bart. Yeah, thanks for having our back there. Uh, how about this one, Corey? This is from Derek and Lake Elsinore. I'm finally going down to Cedros this July, and I hear that there might be a handful of Corey's Christmas tree swim baits that need to make their way into my box. Corey, uh, is uh, is that a color that you recommend? Where's the best place to get your baits? That was from uh, Derek and Lake Elsinore. Well, if you're in Lake Elsinore, uh, closest shop, uh, gosh darn, I don't know, but. Christmas tree is a good one for sure. I mean, that's what you hear, Jeff. Uh, I was going to say, I already know who you're going with. Exactly. I know. <laughs> R.H., yeah. Rosie's husband. Yeah. Uh, that's just, it's a good color, man. It's it's, it's just a good all around. I, I'll, I'll tell you the reason why it works so good. There's some key colors. Okay. okay? Uh, red and orange. I don't care if it's mixed with brown or green, whatever. But orange in the belly of a bait just has that vulnerable eat me look and the christmas tree with the red glitter anything with red glitter is is phenomenal too it's those two colors how about a combination how about a christmas tree with an orange belly yeah yeah I, exactly I there think you I, go i think i might have you to drop the, some off a of fisherman a little cedro special <laughs> you know what i'm making some christmas tree this week all right we'll I, make, make a bunch i'll make them for the shop <laughs> that sounds come on good. down to fisherman's yeah. or uh, dana or seaforth yeah. yeah local all right hey we're gonna be right back and let's talk cook up all this fun talk when we return on let's talk cook about the mightier 1090 espn radio Low gas prices are great. Free ice is amazing. But what sets Summit Gasoline apart from the rest goes much deeper. When you pull up to the pumps, you will first notice how clean everything is, the great sound system, and, of course, the low gas and diesel prices. Walk into Summit Gasoline Bistro, and you will meet Martha, the store manager, that heads up the well-trained and busy staff. Check out the selection of frozen bait and chum, the top-of-the-line Italian coffee, and so much more. Get your discounted Everingham Live Bait Certificates, your free 100 pounds of ice with a 30 gallon minimum purchase. Stock up on snacks, beer, water, and soda for your trip. The amazing staff at Summit Gasoline are always happy to help you out. Sometimes little things make a difference, like free high-tech air for your tires or the two acres at the San Diego Sports Arena that make it easy to pull your boat and trailer in and out. Summit Gasoline at the Sports Arena. Try them once and you'll be back. Low prices, friendly staff, and easy in and out with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Arena. There are plenty of boat slips and marinas in San Diego, but there's only one Kona Kai. It's not just a place to park your boat. It's a way of life here in America's finest city. The Kona Kai Resort Spa and Marina has multiple swimming pools and a private beach, waterfront restaurants, and award-winning spa, most of which is included for marina tenants. Check ResortKonaKai.com for more information. The Kona Kai Resort, much more than just a place to park your boat. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. He's not just my fishing buddy. After 30 years, he's a brother, and I'd sure hate to lose him. His bass boat's got nothing to do with it. So I make sure both of us wear a life jacket. Save the ones you love, even if they don't own a fancy boat. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. Hook up! All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up. And it's been a fun show with you, Rick. Oh, I, so I really fun, enjoy dude. these, man. Me too. And uh, giving away a full day trip on yeah. San Diego at a Seaforth. Okay, Man, so let's, more stoked. Yeah, let's coin flip your find right. out. Call our texter. Oh, we got the texter. texter. How about that? How about uh, Duffy? Duffy Long Beach. <laughs> Duffy, congratulations, yeah. man. I know uh, Booger's uh, Ryan starting up next uh, next Saturday there at a Seaforth. Like I said, that's for a reason. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. And you're going to get a chance to go, man. Maybe you go on that trip. Maybe uh, you go when the yellow is biting. Maybe you go when it's offshore bluefin. Whatever it may be, full day trip on board the San Diego. Totally, totally stoked on I that. Know. Corey, I have, just like you said, I have so much fun on these shows. It's always fun to see where it goes. And today was a little bit of everything from rock fishing to bass fishing to Hell offshore bit. bait live bait that was such great stuff so yeah a, a lot a lot of fun and i always uh enjoy there's you know there's there's no yeah no set thing no set plan we just like hanging out and talking about fishing it is and you know what's cool we were talking about bait and i don't care if you're steve lasley or dave hansen 
as if if you're fishing marlin or you're fishing halibut fishing calicos fishing largemouth bass if you can understand the bait you understand your predator that's it man yeah Period. no doubt uh my favorite my favorite line from steve loomis from back in the day was there's no there's no such thing as too much live bait and right? keeping it alive fishing it alive whether that be like we were talking about earlier making it the best it can be in its tank loading it the best it can be you presenting it the best way you offering it as chum whatever it may be it's 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 the factor. It's We're very fortunate maker. to have Everingham. Hey, to be able to pull up and spend fifty bucks and get what you need and bait for the day. We're stoked. The best in the world, man. No doubt about it. Corey, an awesome show. I look forward to getting to do it again real soon with you. A lot of fun. That was a blast. Hey, we appreciate you listening next Saturday. As we mentioned, a great show. Captains Gavin and Matt from Captains Concepts are going to be joining us. And the next Sunday, Captain Marcus and Adam from the New Loan. A couple of great shows coming from you next Saturday and Sunday. You're listening to Let's Talk Cookup, Southern California sport fishing voice on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Cookup app. We'll see you next week.